everyone, it's Callie Danielle. Welcome back to another Callie Faces video. Suge Knight and Terry Carter both grew up in Compton, California. Both became successful businessmen, and both were well-known and respected in their neighborhoods. But when the two men were involved in a fatal hit-and-run, Suge Knight's name was the one most mentioned. Very little was said about Terry Carter, the man who was killed in the hit and run. And even less was said about who Terry Carter was or why he was even there on that tragic afternoon. Terry Carter was born on February 18, 1959. He grew up in Compton, California, in the area where Pyru and blood gangs originated. At a young age, Terry learned about the importance of hard work. As a kid, he helped his mother in her soul food restaurant. And as a teenager, he learned how to fix and build custom cars. This led to him eventually opening his own car dealership, and then later opening a truck and limo company and a custom lowrider shop. Terry Carter was one of the first successful businessmen from his neighborhood, a neighborhood prone to gangs and gang violence. But Terry never let gang politics get in the way of business. And this earned him a reputation for always doing right by people, which gained him respect from everyone. Whenever a conflict in the area needed resolving, Terry would be called to step in and mediate the situation because he could talk to anyone and everyone knew him, including Suge Knight which is why Suge Knight agreed to meet on the day of the hit and run when Terry Carter called and asked him to. Prior to the hit and run incident, Terry Carter and Suge Knight had known each other for over 20 years. First meeting when Suge Knight and Dr. Dre came into Terry's lowrider shop in the early 1990s looking to buy a lowrider. Terry did one better and built him a custom lowrider that was later used to help promote Dr. J's album, The Chronic. From there, Terry Carter and Suge Knight became business associates and friends. In 1998, Terry added record label owner to his portfolio of businesses, forming heavyweight records with rapper Ice Cube. Their first album was the soundtrack for the movie The Players Club. Terry Carter then went on to work with numerous hip-hop artists, including Snoop Dogg and the Eastsiders, working as Tradies manager. And Terry brought that same mentality that he had in his Compton neighborhood to the music industry. And he again gained respect by being a person in the music industry who could always step in and mediate disagreements. So when Terry Carter got a call on January 29th, 2015, saying that Suge Knight was arguing with filmmakers on the set of N.W.A.'s movie Straight Outta Compton, Terry, of course, wanted to help resolve the argument. Suge Knight was reportedly upset over not being compensated for his depiction in the N.W.A. movie and had shown up on set to talk to Dr. Dre and Ice Cube, but was turned away by security and ordered to leave by police. This resulted in an altercation between Suge Knight and actor Clebone Sloan, who had been hired to work as a technical advisor to assist with security on the Straight Outta Compton movie set. According to court documents, after Suge Knight left the movie set, he got a call from Terry Carter, who asked him to meet at Tam's Burgers, a restaurant in Compton. Reports suggest that Terry's intention was to bring Suge Knight and Clebone Sloan together to make peace between Suge, Dre, and Ice Cube. But security footage taken from Tam's Burgers and released by TMZ shows that before Terry had a chance to talk to Suge, Clebone Sloan ran up to Suge's Ford Raptor as he pulled in and started throwing punches through Suge Knight's driver's side window. They each exchanged blows before Suge threw his truck into reverse hitting Clebone Sloan with a side mirror. Suge then shifted his truck into drive and it lunged forward, running over Terry Carter, who died shortly after being hit. 
Jerry Carter was 55 years old and left behind his wife and three children. After Suge Knight hit Terry Carter and Clebone Sloan with his truck, he drove away, turning the incident into a hit and run. The next day, he turned himself into police and was officially charged with murder, attempted murder, and hit and run, resulting in death. Clebone Sloan was knocked unconscious after the hit and taken to a hospital. He later recovered and admitted to police that he was the one who had started the fight with Suge Knight that day. And he blamed himself for Terry's death. So when he was asked to cooperate with police and testify against Suge Knight in court, he refused. During Suge Knight's trial, Suge never denied that he was driving the truck that killed Terry Carter, but he claimed that he was being attacked and acting in self-defense. Terry Carter's family believed Suge Knight wasn't the only one who was responsible for what happened that day, and they filed an $81 million wrongful death lawsuit against Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and NBC Universal, claiming that they all knew Suge Knight objected to his depiction in the movie and that he was capable of violence. The Carter family also alleged that the producers hired Clee Bone Sloan for security but then negligently supervised him. The lawsuit, however, ended in a mistrial. Suge Knight's case ended in 2018 when he pleaded no contest to voluntary manslaughter and was sentenced to 28 years in state prison. He'll be 73 years old when he's released. At funeral services held for Terry Carter, 2,000 people gathered to remember the man who was an inspiration to so many. Family and friends spoke about him always having a smile on his face, giving to others and uplifting those around him, and being a strong father figure to not only his own children, but the many nieces and nephews that he'd helped raise. Three years after his death, at the end of Suge Knight's trial, the Carter family gathered for a final press conference where they vowed that Terry Carter's name and legacy will forever live on. <laughs>